Hi, my name is Sean Olson, the developer of a plugin called Wallworm. It's a tool for 3ds Max to help you get your source scenes and assets into the source game engine. I started this project back in 2010. Back then it was just a program about making it easier to get models, but it's evolved over time and I think it's time to give a general overview and instructions on how to use Wallworm. This video is just a general sweeping explanation of Wallworm. It doesn't go into a lot of details of the specifics. The whole purpose is to show you kind of the logic behind many of the features and functions that have not been documented or have been ignored or left kind of vague. Now the primary goal of Wallworm at this stage is to make it so that you can do almost your entire process of designing assets for source inside of 3ds Max and reduce the number of things that you need to edit externally like text files etc. If you're unfamiliar with source then you may not know this but source has a lot of less than artist friendly ways of getting your assets into source and requires a lot of knowledge on editing text files like texture materials, QCs for compiling, etc etc. Also I believe the level editor for source called Hammer is very limiting. I personally prefer an environment where I can design my level and all of my assets in one place. In this scene you can see an example of this. I have a level for the game Counter-Strike, currently this is being built for Counter-Strike Global Offensive, where I have both level geometry and my assets being designed in the same exact environment. For example, things like these big block walls are all world geometry. In hammer terms, they're brushes. Other things, like this tree and all of this foliage, are models. I'm designing them all in place. There's several advantages to this. For example, the foliage I'm building for this area up here is much easier to build if I can build it around my surroundings. One of the problems in building things in Hammer is you can't always build your organic things easily around your world geometry because you can't build any kind of models inside of Hammer. So when you do things in Hammer, you have to export them or measure out all your dimensions and then give them to the modeler who opens them in 3ds Max or Maya or some other program. And then he builds them and sends them back into Source. And then you have to compile them and then you have to open them into Hammer and then you place them and see if they actually fit and line up correctly. Well, if you do everything inside of 3ds Max, you completely circumvent that problem. I can build my models directly over world geometry. For example, over here, I have foliage that's growing up and over and around world geometry and other models. You can't do that in Hammer. It's a lot more convenient and quicker to do it in here. Wallworm can do a few things. You can build your models and your world geometry inside of one environment. You can export models. You can export worlds, the levels, the VMFs, the map. You can export materials. You can export textures. There are some other tools in Wallworm as well. You can create res files. For example, in this scene, I have many, many models. And if you want to pack those models into your map and let people download them and play them on a, a server, you need to either pack them into the map or you need to make a res file. And Wallworm will do both of those. For example, in this scene, we will open up the res maker. And I want this to create a res file that has all of these assets. And what it's going to do is create this res file that lists every type of thing that Wallworm knows about. For example, it knows that there's going to be the map and the text file because it found those. And then it also went through and found all VTFs, all VMTs, all MDLs, waves, etc., soundscapes, anything that it knows to look for, it's going to create and it knows to look for these things based off of the assets you have created in the scene in the name of your map file. So that's one way to make sure that it's easy, quick to make those assets deliverable across the internet. Another thing is the VMF exporter, if we're exporting the scene. If you don't want to use a res file, you can also just pack these same assets directly into your map. So here we have this pack assets function. I can tell it to pack various types of assets. And then when I export this, and compile it, those assets will be directly packed into your map. Kind of like what PackRat does. 
Now, there are different aspects to wallworm. Of course, the different things that you'll use is dependent on what kind of things you do. If, for example, you're just a modeler, you may not be interested in the VMF exporter. And if you're just a level designer, you may not be interested in the modeling aspect. Those are all up to you. The cool thing is that all of these functions are available to you. And if you like to do all of the entire gamut of what you can do in Source, you can. And that's kind of how I am. I like to do all kinds of different things. I enjoy the level design. I enjoy the modeling and texturing. I enjoy doing the sounds, etc. Which brings us to another option, the sounds. You can create soundscapes inside of your level entities. If you're using a third-party plugin called Convexity, you can add entities into your scene. And the entities are just like those in Source. And if I made a soundscape and I place them variously around my level, I can then use Wallworm to generate a dummy soundscape file. And the utilities, if I look for Soundscaper, I'm going to just use it by this name instead of overwrite the one I already have for this. It's going to then go through the map and find any soundscapes that are in the scene. And if I open up that file, you'll see it will have a dummy soundscape file that will list all of the existing soundscapes. So this is just a little convenience function to get you on your way faster. So then you can go and open this and fill out all of the actual sound rules that you have for this file. Wallworm also allows you to work with the entity input and outputs with the entity outputs function, which allows you to work with changing the interaction between entities and objects in your scene. By default, lights and models made by Wallworm model tools and a few other things are automatically added to the entity list. Some of the other functions you have to use convexity to create entities for. Eventually Wallworm will probably have its own built-in entity editing functions. In fact, I intend to make it a node editor at some point. The way this works here is it lists all entities that are in the scene and if you select one that's part of everything, it will fill up with the current outputs that it has and you can select an option and it will pre-fill the current values that it has in these and it works kind of like the way that the hammer one now this one is a little bit finicky I still have to work on this but it's one of those things you can use and you have to just play with it to get a feel for how it works I can also list the current entities accepting inputs down here to automatically pre-fill a target entity with uh, one of the entities in the scene again eventually I, I will do work on this and make it such that it's a node editor but that's in the future in wallworm you can also create the displacements these objects down here in the ground, the ground cover, those are displacements. You can export all of those, create them and edit them inside of Max. And if you create blend materials in Max and, and read the docs on this, you can export the blend material straight from Max into the Source game engine. Almost all the objects, the materials can be exported as world geometry, which will be either world vertex blend textures for displacements, light map generic for world geometry, and you can also do unlit generic for world geometry and for models. The models will also do vertex lit generic. And now let's talk a little bit about the Wallworm model tools themselves. These are the original tools. Uh, they've been expanded over time. What they allow you to do is quickly compile and send your models into source. Now this is the UI for the Wallworm model tools. Every time you create a Wallworm model, it creates a little helper in the scene, which is a text object. It is always prepended with WWMT. These might be hard to see here. Like this. So, if I've already got one in the scene, I can use Pick Model and select that model. And now that model, this object's model, is currently filled into the UI for Wallworm model tools. Now I still have this helper. This is the WWMT helper, the Wallworm model tool helper. Even though it's actually technically just a text object, it's referred to in all the docs as the WWMT helper. It stores all the data. In fact, all the data is, you can quickly access it and look at it if you right click it go to object properties, user defined, you'll see the current list of object properties that are currently set in this model. Now this is the object that's selected. If I click this button select model, it will select in the scene my current, the model for this helper. And then if I hit Z, I will quickly zoom to that model. So these pieces of rubble here 
are what that model pertains to. If I find a different one and click on it, let's let's go to one of these other ones. Let's go to the bent tree and hit select model and hit Z again. I'll zoom to it. Here's the the model for the tree. Now if I just want to view this one model, I can click the isolate selection thing in Max and it will show me just that tree model. Now when I went to export this, I can export the textures and it will list all of the VMTs that I might want to export and the VTFs that are associated with this. And this one happens to have different models for different aspects, so it's a multi-material. And I can export them straight into the game. It will make the VMTs and the VTFs. I can then export the model itself and it will just quickly create the entire model and you'll have it in source. Now there's been a lot of misconceptions over the last year or two about what Wallworm is and does and some of those are surrounding the Wallworm model tools themselves. So I'm going to be clear about this. Wallworm just expedites the process. One thing it does is it writes a QC file for you, a base one. Some people feel that they don't like the idea of something else writing it for them. They can write it themselves, which is fine. You can still use Wallworm even if you have that perspective to more easily export your SMDs as a group. You can also use the Wallworm exporter to create a baseline QC from which you edit yourself. For example, once this model has already been exported, there's going to be a QC. I can click this button here and it will open the QC that was generated by Wallworm. Now I can just go in here and edit this however I want and then recompile it. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. It's just a quicker way to get to that point. Another misconception about Wallworm has been that it somehow directly sends assets as MDLs. It doesn't. It just kind of like automates some of the functions that you would do manually. For example, when you export your model, it will create the QC and the SMD files, and then it will automatically send those to the compiler for you. In the past, you would have to manually do these through some other process. You can use the built-in SMD exporter inside of Wallworm, or you can use Wonderboy or Cannon Fodder as your SMD exporters. Note, in 2013 of Max, you have to use Wallworm because the others haven't been recompiled yet. Now, Wallworm can be used by both novices and advanced users. You can't think of it as just, uh, just for one or the other. For novices, it's really good for just getting quick static props straight into source that don't ever want to edit QC files or anything like that. If you want to make a crate that has a certain look and feel, you can just do it straight through Wallworm and set a couple functions and then go. For the more advanced people, again, you can edit the QC directly. You can open up the VMT directories and edit the VMTs that are created. After they've been generated, you can go in and, and edit them to your, to your needs. And of course you can use all the other functions that are in here. The more you know about source in general, and the more you know about 3ds Max, the more Wallworm will make sense. If you do not know much about source and or 3ds Max, there's a very good uh, chance that you will do things that will make your models come out incorrectly, etc., especially if you make complex things. Now here's a couple tips with Wallworm model tools. One, do not use grouped geometry. And this is the group function up here. For the world geometry in the VMF exporter, that's fine. For the model tools, do not use them. Two, for static props as much as possible, you probably want to use this use local origin as world origin. And if you're using a game like CSGO or Source Filmmaker, you also probably want to use calculate origin in SMD especially if you're doing like this scene where the models are away from the world origin and are placed randomly in the scene. Another tip is that if something doesn't really quite make sense, for the most part almost all functions in Wallworm have tooltips, so if you hover over something, a little tooltip will pop up explaining what that does. For example, this button here will hide the model or show the model of the current Wallworm model tool helper and it tells you 
unhide the model if it is hidden, hide the model. In the collision model one, here's an example. Hide all meshes belonging to the collision model, or show all meshes belonging to the collision model. So in this case, if I want to show all of the meshes belonging to this tree's collision model, I can click show, or hide them. And again, most options will give you a little tooltip. Not all, there are a few that I haven't got around to yet. But you can see what they do by hovering over them if you're confused. And another tip, and this one doesn't really relate to Wallworm itself, is learning how to manage the complexity of a scene. If you have very large scenes in, Wall, in 3ds Max, you can open the layer manager and create layers. These are like viz groups. And these layers actually will export as viz groups in the VMF exporter. So you can hide and show layers. Other options are the visibility, the display options. You can say that I want to hide all geometry, and then there's all of your things that are left over, things like that. And another one that many people don't know about is viewport clipping. If I have a large scene and I have complex things and I want to see inside of other things, I can use a viewport clipping to hide things with a viewport clipping plane. So now I can see inside or behind things based on the angle of view. And you can turn on viewport clipping anytime by clicking on the perspective, the viewport type, and checking or unchecking viewport clipping. And that will turn off or on the viewport clipping utility. And a final little hint of something that seems to be commonly uh, misunderstood by users is that when Wallworm exports things, it has to have permission to write to the folders. So the folders must exist previously, depending on your operating system. Some will not let 3ds Max write to folders. If, for example, I have a model source directory, and this is the directory where my models are getting exported to, into this STK content model source. If these folders don't exist and your operating system doesn't give permission to write to those directories, then you need to create them. Some operating systems allow, some don't. Some permission setups allow, some don't. So if, for example, you get, ex if you get notices or warning about no write permission, you may need to create the folder where you're trying to output either into the model source directories or into your actual game, for example, materials. If you're trying to export into a folder called wallworm.com and materials, but that folder doesn't exist and you get a warning about no write directory, you need to either change permissions on these folders or you need to create the folders yourself. In some mods, you have to have Steam running in order for the exporters to work. In other mods, you don't have to worry about that. We're gonna open this level up and show you an example of this scene being exported into Hammer. So here's our level inside of Hammer. You can see all the objects, the props. We see all the viz groups that were created. And these relate to the layers inside of Max. So there's a lot more that's in Wallworm. And I just wanted to give a general overview of most of the features that are currently in it. You can do a lot of other things that I didn't go over in this video. You can set things as Funk Detail with Wallworm, and those are in the Anvil. Anvil is the level editing tools, which you'll have to learn about with other videos and in the documentation. You can create skies. You can render out 3D skies with Skywriter. And there's a lot more. So anyway, this is a general overview of what Wallworm is and what it can do. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of where I'm coming from as I develop Wallworm and have a better understanding of what you can do with it. If you have any issues, feel free to contact me and please share your feedback in the Wallworm forums. And also feel free to leave screenshots of work that you're doing with Wallworm. And of course, I always enjoy accepting donations for all the work of putting together these videos and sharing the documentation. Again, my name is Sean Olson. You can learn more about me at my website, seanolson.net, and you can always get the latest version of Wallworm at wallworm.com. Thank you, and have a good day.